This video topic was requested by my patron, Nikki Marie. If you would like to become a patron and have your video topic requests prioritized, link down below. So whenever someone asks to be a moderator or seeks that out specifically, I always ask myself, why? And usually the answer is no good. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about who to not make a moderator in your roleplay game. Okay, so you want to run a roleplay, and you've seen my other video on how to build your mod team, or if you haven't, link up in the card, you can check that out, that gives you all the tips on who to actually make a moderator. So today what we're going to do is kind of flip that around and talk about who to not make into a mod. These are five red flags that people might do that are clues that you might not want to make them a moderator for your roleplay game. Now, before we get into the clues, let's be clear. These are not the end all be all. You might see these behaviors and then you make the person a mod and it's fine and everything goes well. So you'll need to consider these within the context of your role play and your moderation style. So the first person I recommend to not make into a moderator is those that ask to be moderators. Role play groups are one, spaces where anyone can go make one that they lead, and two, they're hobbyist spaces where people can kind of come and go as they please. They're not places of structural power like a place of employment or something like that. So whenever someone asks to be a moderator or seeks that out specifically, I always ask myself, why? And usually the answer is no good. I have rarely seen it where someone comes into a game, asks to be mod, they're made mod and everything goes just fine. And I truly believe that leaders who are a little bit reluctant to step into a leadership position tend to make better leaders, especially in a place like a role play where no one is really obligated to anyone else. Now, I don't mean a situation here where someone has applied to be a mod. If you are a role play where you've set up moderator applications, then you're soliciting for people to apply. So if someone applies through that, they're not really doing the whole asking to be a mod thing that I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that someone comes into your game and you're not looking for mods, but within a short span of time, they've expressed like, hey, if you need mods, hit me up. There is a reason someone has come into your game and is offered to be a mod instead of making their own game, which they lead. The reason of course varies from person to person, but in my experience, the reason is typically something that makes them not a very good fit to be a mod. All right, number two on the flip side of that is people that aren't interested at all in being mods. So if you approach someone in your game and you ask them to help you out and be a moderator and they say no or they sound reluctant or maybe they say yes, but it's not even that enthusiastically, in my experience, these people aren't going to make very good mods. Modding is a lot more work than just being a player in a game. So if someone's not really up for it, don't try to force it on them. It doesn't matter how good of a mod you think someone would be if they stepped into the position. If they're not really up for it, what's going to happen is they're going to take the position and then they're not going to put in the extra effort to actually do it well. In roleplay, there's no real obligation to anyone else except for desire. So if that desire is totally void, like not there, it's not going to magically appear just because you asked for it to. All right, the third thing to consider is don't mod people that you've only known for a few months. Online, it's even harder to really know a person than it is in real life. The screen creates a situation where it's very easy for someone to hide the parts of themselves that they don't want you to see and highlight the parts of themselves that they do want you to see. And that means I recommend role playing and chatting with someone for at least a few months before you consider making them a moderator. You don't want to be blindsided and find out that someone is a totally different person than you thought they were just because you got impatient or desperate for help when it comes to your roleplay game. That's going to put your game in an even worse situation than if you had tried to mod it by yourself. So be patient, observe, don't rush. And fourth is don't mod people who don't take feedback well. So in my role plays, we have character applications and it is not uncommon when someone submits an application and we take a look at it, that it needs a few tweaks or rewriting before we can actually accept it. And during that process, we give the player feedback. If you get bad vibes when you're giving someone feedback that makes you think they're not taking it super well, do not mod this person. Someone that cannot take feedback cannot lead. 
because part of being a leader means constantly evaluating yourself in the way that you're interacting with your community so that you can lead it to the best of your ability. Mods must be able to take feedback. So someone that can't shouldn't be a mod. All right, number five is people that aren't that active in your roleplay. For better or for worse, your players are monkey see, monkey do, even if they don't want to be. So if you have moderators that don't have good activity, it's likely your players won't have good activity either. So don't mod someone who has poor or spotty activity. Now what I don't mean by this is if one of your mods who normally has fine activity starts to slip here or there, that doesn't mean you need to remove their mod status. Real life comes first. Things happen things change. I think it's important to have grace when it comes to somebody who used to be active and now isn't that active. But if someone already isn't that active, then don't give them moderator status thinking that this new power is going to somehow make them more active in your roleplay. It's not. In fact, it might even hurt their activity as they try to balance their mod responsibilities with actually roleplaying. So those are the five types of people that I recommend to not make moderators in your game. So to recap, first we're talking about people who ask to be mods, then people who aren't interested in being mods, then people you've known for less than a few months, then people who don't take feedback well, and last, people who aren't that active. So what other red flags do you guys look for? I'm really curious. There are definitely other red flags that I look for, but I feel like these are kind of like my top five ones that when you do make one of these people moderators, it just, it just doesn't go the way that you want it to go. So that's why I chose to highlight them in this video and to keep it short, I didn't want to go too much beyond that. Um, but let me know if there's other red flags that you guys see down below, or also if you've had experiences where you've moderated people with these behaviors and it went fine. I definitely have. I've had, you know, people become moderators that I thought like maybe it wasn't such a good idea and then it turned out it was actually fine and it wasn't a big deal. So all of those experiences, I would love to hear about them. Let me know down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.